Right, I'm continuing this wall here. I'm going to build this wall. And I've just gone over it with laser. And you see left, middle, right. And the floor's out. That's the left. That's the middle. And that's the right. So, and I've already done it on the ceiling there, or up to that timber anyway. You see there's only about 10 mil difference from left to right. Doesn't really matter what sort of shape it is, but it gives me, gives me an idea of the sort of shape of this room. What I'll be doing is screwing a timber to the floor and then I haven't really got a timber to fix to because these are when I put these joists in I just went centre centre of these because they run they run out by quite a bit that one would have been quite over there a lot over there so I'll get a timber up floor and plumb it up then I'll put some noggins Noggins between this timber. Oh, that one it actually is. If I can't get onto this joist, it's not far off. Maybe I should have put it in place, but it don't matter. Anyway, get this one screwed to the floor. It's quite dry this, so I'm not going to put a damp cloth under it. Same as I didn't that. I've got a handy spot for my laser as well. Right, this concrete's crap. It's only about an inch thick. So I managed to get a fixing in there. But these, I'll show you a lot. That's the timber. So, I think I'll get some studs in. And then put screws wherever I can. It should stop it walking, but yeah. First thing I'm going to do is work out that and put a top sort of leg down like that. So I've got my laser as close as I can to that edge and to the top there and to that bottom corner down there. I can put some noggins across here and get my header on. Right, so that's what I've got at the moment. A sole plate, top plate, header, going across there. And of course, you know, I'd prefer to screw this head down onto that leg. But I haven't really got the space. Let's see, it's just stuff. Anyway, I've just checked that that wall, that wall's plumb, so what I can do is come in 1200mm, centre, get a timber in, 1200 again, and then I'm going to go 400mm centres in between for studs. If that wall was crooked one way or the other, I'd have to allow for that so that I can scribe that board to the wall, but it's not, it's fairly plumb. So I can just come in straight under 1200 and wherever my mark is, so imagine that's my mark, get my laser on it, like that, and that gives me the centre of the top of my leg, so I can fix it top and bottom, and then when it comes to it we're just putting a single row of noggins right along the middle. So if there's a bend in this timber, I'll start at one end and I'll cut this snogging to push or pull that leg to get it straight. I'll show you when it comes to it anyway. Right, I'm just marking out my studs, where they're going to go. 
This OSB is quite often metric now, 1200mm. But this stuff's imperial, 4 foot. So I put my marks, 16 inch centres. Uh, this leg first. I just spiked a couple of screws in, top and bottom, stop it moving. I'm using my laser. So it's clear there, it's clear up there. It's just touching the edge of the timber here. So I get a fixing in the middle just to pull that so that the laser's set on the wall rather than the timber. And I think I'm just going to put a single row up the middle, one at the top, one every sort of, yeah, that, that distance, 600mm or something. I've said it before but you only want the amount of plug sticking out the amount of right so there's one two three four five six screws in there it's hard to explain but in a house I'd put two four six eight ten screws in I'd double them up so it's hard to explain, don't know why. A single row will be fine. Alright, get my timbers in now. Right, a bit tight for space here. That'll give me my edge mark. I think I said I'm going imperial. So 16 inch to the centre, but then I've come half the width of the timber this side. So that'll be the centre of my board. Then my timber there. Because when you sit your timber on top, you lose your mark, so you lose, to, so you work to the edge. Put a little X next to it. So because these timbers are 2.4 meters, I can just stand it in place, put a pencil line, cut it off at that. So a bit like that, this is C16 timber so it's quite straight, quite clean. I'll just make a pencil mark at that now. Right, I've cut that, but I left the pencil line in. See the pencil line on the edge of the timber. It's hard to fix these sometimes when you just cut them just that fraction short and they're wobbling around. But, hammer. When you're hitting them across, hit that timber and that timber at the same time. Then it stops dead. Same here, look. No, I'll get some nails in that. See what I was talking about it being bent. See the lasers and off it. So this noggin that I put in here, I'll make it long enough so that when I fix it, it pulls that timber to the shape like that. I'll probably end up screwing that end because the nails might pull. So two in one side, one down the middle and the other. Same up there, one. So, that nail gun works alright off my little compressor. I'll get this noggin in now. Pull it straight. So, a bit like that. Like I said, I've screwed that one in so that it pulls it in. 
and it's pretty much there. So I can do a nice setup. My laser going the other way. Put 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 some marks on these so I know where the centers are. And then I'll do the same to each one. Put my laser on it like that. Pull use the noggin to pull them pull them straight. Enough. You see now this next one needs pushing or pulling should I say. So now I've got that one to work off. Work my way along. Alright, so that's what I've got at the moment. You could use these noggins to help you nail the ends, you know, stop the board moving, stop the plank, the stud moving when you nail it. But that gap isn't always guaranteed to be that gap. It should be in theory. It should be the same as that, that should be the same as that. But don't always. Sometimes you want that millimetre or two. I do anyway. Anyway, this is a little short of a board. So I'm going to be cutting it, and it's OSB this, not OSB3, so it doesn't have the treatment. I don't know the facts on that. I'll Google it. But I'm going to cut it so that it's 10mm short. The top's fairly level, remember my stick. But the floor, floor kicks down this way, I think it will. So I'm going to measure down 10mm short, measure down 10mm short, and cut it off at that. So my cuts are going to be straight, but the floor will be like that, so it'll be be near enough. But like I say, I'm going to leave it 10 mil off the floor just just to just to protect it a little bit. It's not damp in here, but the floor might get wet at some point. And right, before I get carried away boarding it, I've got to finish that end off. I've got to put a doorway in there. This is the casings that they sell. It's for 2.9, 838, 32 inch, yeah, 32 inch door, you've got to notch it yourself, I can't get a 30 inch which is the size of the door that I've cut, but I'll cut that first then I can work off them sizes, and it's just a cheap hollow core plywood with a flush door, don't know how long it'll last but it's cheap just for now. 1981 so I'll cut my legs 20 mil longer so I've got 20 mil gap at the bottom so 201 2 meters and one 2001 uh, I was just going to cut these but they're pretty much already there they allow for a 25 mil gap obviously I'm just going to trim them just a fraction, just clean them up, take them back to the 2001 like I said. And got my table set up, but pencil line there, from there I can work out 30 inch and I'll cut a notch just like that. So the door's 30 inch. I'm going to cut my notch at 7, 6, Eight. So that's me, 30 inch plus that bit, so 7, 6, 8 to there. What I can do is whip this end off, this timber is the same as this, so I can use that as like a template to work out where my notch is going to go. So that came off the end of there, look how bent it is. Anyway, I can offer that up there. I got a square and a chisel, chop a channel out there. Right, Capex would be good for this with its channeling thing. I've got a pencil line to work to.
Right, I put some glue on these joints. These screws are oversized, but they've got a shank on them, so I'm not going to pilot them, just drive them in. So now I've got a width to work to, which is 806, and a height of, get it on, 222, 2 meters 22. The floor is sort of level. It, goes up just by five mil or so that way that is 2022 there so I think what I'm gonna do is just put another one in the head that'll give me a good 15-20 oh, mil clearance so I can get the top of the head top of the door frame level I need another leg there and we'll see See where it comes to whether I'm putting another one in. So I need another leg there. And I might have to put another one in. I might put two up the side of the door, door frame anyway. Just to stiffen it. Uh, it's a bit difficult to show you on this, but if this was a regular wall, I'd put two studs in that were the door width or the door frame width plus two timbers so the door frame plus two and then I'd put two so what I've got here is the head and the frame will just fit in there about 10 mil 15 mil clearance so that I can so I can plaque it plumb but what I want to do is put a timber down there but I want that timber to go to the floor I want to put another one behind it that will sit on this timber. Like I say, what I'd normally do would be put that second timber in, or that first timber, then a timber, then I'd cut the bottom out of the of the sole plate, and then put like a, a 3x2 sort of timber frame inside. You know, it's a bit difficult to show you on this. So that one's going to be wrong, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to move the door over that way anymore by putting another one that goes to the floor. So what I've got there is that header. So I'll make a mark where that is. Then I want to come over the width of the timber that's going to be the leg at the side of my frame, wherever that is. And then I'm going to put another timber on top of there. So that's what I've got right at the moment. I've screwed it just because I don't want it to move too much. I think the door's getting hung on this leg. That's just temporary. Just to stop me timber moving. So what I'll do now is cut those two pieces of timber out. And when I cut it, I'll use the the tip of my saw. So that when I'm hitting the concrete, I don't trash my whole saw. I think I've got an old one that'll do that anyway.
so I need to put another leg in here now fill that gap up and normally I'd put another leg in there with the header and you do it like that so that when you build a wall it's in a straight line you just allow for your openings anyway I think I've only got one timber left so I'll get that in there and the casing can go in but before I get carried away with casing I'm going to sight it through and you want to use my pencil the edge of this frame and that frame you just want to look through them and they should be parallel now it looks like it wants to go in just a fraction I've only put a couple of screws in there so I'll just give it a whack this one might come out a bit one or the other but I'll make them so they're in twist what I'm looking at is that little red line that frame and that frame anyway it's got a noggin in that end I can think about the frame board it first so a bit like that normally there'll be another leg coming down there and the head would be sat on top of these not today though because that one flew through I just let that one I didn't bother pushing it up prefer it to ground then up to the top don't fucking matter anyway nice strong frame to get the door in need to do something with the top of this but light needs to come over centre to the door normally but that's still be in my way a little bit I think there might be enough wire we'll see no, it's time to start boarding this I finished off the header over there that's all in place now and I've just put the laser up just to check what my header's like now and that's 514 in the middle here it is about the same a little bit less and at this end 510s 511 so I'm only about 4 mil out of level across the top there so I'm going to measure down to the floor minus 10 mil or so and cut the bottom like I say jack it up 10 mil off the floor so that it's it's not you know so soaking up any moisture that might be on the floor at any time I'm going to screw them on with these flooring screws the 50 mil long but the the what I've got I could get smaller ones you don't need to have them that long but that's what I've got so that's what I'm going to use I'll get this one in and that one it should fly along and I've gone to the effort of getting my table out sometimes it's a pain in the neck getting these out or in your mind you think oh you know throw some timbers on the floor just whip the bottoms off these boards but actually once you get it set up it's a lot more comfortable working place working height and I have a roof to cover me so I'll get these boards cut and screw guns are alright from here don't know about there but definitely won't get in there I think I might drill some holes. He's going to drop some wires down for sockets that are going to be this height. There's going to be a bench with sockets above. So I might drill some holes along the top. Because he's going to find it hard to drill otherwise. I'll get a massive bonus for that. And there's not many screws in the bottom. Because the concrete's crap. So I've bought some ball bolts. 
I don't expect them to hold it down and you saw I knocked these timbers in so the wall isn't gonna you know come up but if I get some ball bolts in at least it'll stop it moving that way what it should do anyway best I can do with this crappy floor so there's some holes they should be plenty big enough Thank you. 